This is it, the final piece to the puzzle for this Jag. And I am so happy that Simply Performance have once again been able to get this out to me as soon as possible so I can get the car back on the road, ready for the MOT, which is very, very soon. I did everything on this car and then the knock sensor decided to go. So I'm gonna go and replace it right now. If you need anything for your Jaguar, Simply Performance are the guys to talk to. They've been very, very helpful in supporting the channel. So please do show your support to them in the same way that you show support to the channel. So if you ever happen to be doing this job yourself, what I ended up doing to make it easier was I was using this magnet to hold it in place. And then with my other hand, I was there kind of prodding where that little indent is here. And I was kind of like going like, one side of the magnet, one side with this. Just kind of wiggling it, wiggling it, and then it did slip down. Then we need to get this here on top of that. Slowly pull it away. There we go, that's sat on top. And then I think it's a 13. Yes, it is a 13. Let's just hand tighten that for now. I'm not gonna torque it up as such, I'm just gonna give it a little, there we go, that is done. All right, let's see. Restricted performance, but it might just need, oh, it's gone. I suppose now it's time to take it for a drive then. I ain't got very much fuel, so I can't be too long. You forgot to put my uh, number plate back on. Okay, in the Jag. Let's hope that it's driving okay. It starts up all right. Yeah, look, it's coming up again, restricted performance. Ugh. It might just be that the code's just stored on there and it's just not liking it, or it could be anything. Knock sensor input low. Okay, that's weird, isn't it? Let's just delete that and see if it comes back. Let's try again. Started up, restricted performance again. Don't know why. It's gone. It's just gone again. It kind of comes and goes. So is it just having a bit of a moment? Restricted performance still up on the thing. I do not know why. Because all of that seems to be all right. Performance stuff's not come back. I just think it's having a bit of a moment, to be honest. I put some contact cleaner into the little uh, the little block there where it connects the wires together for that knock sensor and I've now cleared the code and it's not come back. Okay, I now know why it was indicating really funny when I was uh, out on the road because when you indicate to the right, this one doesn't work. Good news guys, so as you can see, it was just a loose connection. Just needed to push them together a little bit better. Better check the other side while I've got the bumper off. There we go, we can see that that side is also blinking so we are fine put the bumper back and then that might be one of our last jobs it wasn't going down in the hole there because the nozzle wasn't quite reaching it as so it overfilled itself and it all went through this drain hole so that's a shame waste of bloody fuel but there you go what it is i stuck a screwdriver in it just keep it open but yeah what a pain so as you can see i have set up a little bit of a makeshift one person kind of thing so that i can do the brake lines on my own because i need to get the air out because i think that's why my foot goes straight to the floor when i press the brake this is the bleed nipple jesus all it had to do was come out in one and it didn't, it just sheared straight off. Okay, so it's still in the locked closed position. It hasn't unlocked itself. It literally just sheared off as I turned it. Put the ignition on, press the brake, and it's gone straight to the floor um, without leaking anything out of that. Yeah, the brakes aren't doing too good, but for a short journey to the MOT station, it might be okay. Okay, so I've just got home. The Jag drove lovely. The engine is actually really nice and smooth. The transmission changes were smooth. There is banging in the suspension. I've checked everything, so I don't know if I've just missed that one thing that is banging, so that could be the case. The brakes, yeah, they're not very good, um, as expected. It was very, very gentle driving home, making sure I left plenty of room so that I can get the mechanics to bleed the brakes, because they're gonna have to deal with that. The uh, performance, the uh, restricted performance light did not come on. I had the all tail plugged in just in case the whole time. This car just wants to be driven. The restricted performance was simply because the car's not been driven. Okay, so the car is back. I'm really, really happy because it did not fail on welding because of course, I was a little bit worried whether the welding was gonna be good enough, whether I'd done a good enough job, but I must have done for it to pass on the welding, but it did fail on a couple of things. So the car does not have an MOT. In a couple of days time, it's gonna be re-MOT'd and then we should have an MOT on it. Two simple things. One is the brakes, which I already said was gonna be an issue because of where it was, right down the bottom of the pedal because the brakes need bleeding. I let the garage know and they're gonna do that just before the next MOT so that it is fine. 
Second thing that went wrong was the wiper blade, which happened on the day. I literally drove the car to the bloody garage and then I literally turned on the wiper blade to clear some water and the wiper blade lifted up to go and it just had the rubber dragging behind it. And I was just like, what are the chances of that happening? On the day of the MOT, I was just like, really? I used you yesterday and you were fine and now you're not. So yeah, that was quite, quite frustrating. But those are the only two things it failed on for advisories. Two were for like corrosion. And I was like, I don't really know where that is because it said like front suspension area, but to me it looks fine because I've done it. So I don't quite know where that is. And then front brake pipe, and rear brake pipe had stuff on it. So like grease or whatever else, and that was it. So I'm really, really happy with how that has turned out. And I'm hoping that you guys are happy too with the results because I was really worried that the welding wasn't gonna be good enough because you kind of question yourself because I've never done it before. So I have been able to save a car by welding it myself on my own so i'm really really proud of myself for doing that and i'm glad that i could share that journey with you guys so this 600 pound jaguar will soon be mot but there's a couple of jobs done by the garage in a couple of days time so i shall see you on the road in a couple of days thank you very much for watching this video please do like the video please do comment and please do subscribe if you haven't already around 85 percent of people that have watched the videos haven't subscribed i would really appreciate it if you did it would really help to prepare the channel and it means we can do more stuff with cars because that's what i'm planning to do not sure what should i do with the jaguar when it's you know on its first road trip where should i go let me know in the comments down below where should i take my jaguar xj my 600 pound jaguar xj for its first road trip i shall see you in the next video on the road in this jaguar cheers guys